I'm Walter Boren, and I'm the Meyer Scarpa Professor and Chair of the Department of Physiology and Biophysics at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland. A high school teacher was responsible for my choosing physiology, so when I was a sophomore student in high school, they had science fairs back in those days, and she came up with a, an article in a magazine called Scientific American, and she gave different students different Scientific American articles to read. And so she gave me one by John Eccles on transmission across the synapse. And so I kind of turned this into a biology science fair project for the next three years. And so I kind of gotten, had, had gotten sucked up into physiology ever since the time I was maybe 15 years old. So when I went to medical school and was going to get a PhD as part of the medical scientist training program, I knew that was going to be in physiology. It all stems back from high school. So the original plan was for us to collect chapters and then turn them over to a developmental editor who would then lightly rewrite them and create the book. It turned out that when the chapters came in, they were so different from one another, author to author, that we quickly realized that there was no way that you could put this all together with the kind of light rewrite that this talented writer was doing, but he just wasn't spending enough time to, to do it in a way that would make it really sound like it was written with one pen. So Emil Bullpop and I then sat down and started re-editing the book bit by bit. But in the meantime, this took so long, and maybe it was seven years, I was busy running the department, he was busy running other things. And so the book almost died several times. Finally, Bill Schmidt took over as a developmental editor, and Emil and I realized we either had to produce the book or quit. And so we began a period then, the book had already had quite a bit of thought put into the process. Then we began a period of seven years where we had already collected all of the chapters and had rough sketches of the artwork. And for seven years, we sat down at my computer in my office at Yale from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., five days a week, for another five or six hours on Saturday or Sunday. We did this for seven years. And that's what produced the first edition of the textbook with time off for good behavior and vacations and things of that sort. And also, during the middle of all of this, we would then make trips down to the art studio in Philadelphia. And in one weekend trip, we would go through one organ system, like the heart, or the lung, or the kidney. And then once we began to see the artwork being rendered, then we realized we had to go back into the book a second time and make the artwork copacetic with the text and vice versa. So the whole process took seven years of probably you know, 25 hours or more a week. So it was a major, major effort. If I would have known it was that difficult, I never would have done it. But after you've done it, then you want to keep perfecting it. It becomes a, a, a work of love or idiocy, one of the two. Yeah, so, th so there are other books in the market which are either written by multiple experts or there are other books in the market that are penned by one person trying to be all things to all people. And our book is the only major book in the physiology market which I think blends the both, best of both worlds. And so we're multi-authored, so we have people writing who are expert in their field. And yet Emil and I have gone through the entire textbook word by word by word. We're really rather obsessive compulsive about this. And so the book really does feel, I hope, the reader has to be the judge, but our intention was that the book really would feel like it's written by one pen. Uh, we also took quite a bit of effort to make sure that the language, not just the style of the language used, but also the words used, the symbols used in the, in the text, the symbols used in the cartoons that the artist rendered, all of these are consistent from chapter to chapter to chapter. They, the numerical examples that we give are consistent from chapter to chapter to chapter. So if we say that the blood pressure is normally 80 over 120, well, it's the same in every chapter that happens to mention the blood pressure. So we try to uh, have consistency. We try to have a unified style of text and of figures. And everything is written as if it's really one author. And Neil and I pretty much have the book memorized. I think I have it more or less memorized philosophically. He literally knows what pages things are on.